Today we are ciphering, we are alternating, we are splitting, we are substituting, we are translating, and then we take on the rail fence cipher. Hello world, and we are dealing with cryptography katas on episode number 40 of Versus Code Wars. And I hope everyone is having a wonderful and safe day today. Our katas today will be themed around encoding and decoding messages. And we begin today's warm-up segment with a message that has been encoded and can be decoded by switching each letter with a corresponding letter. We notice that each letter is paired with the letter that it coincides with when the alphabet is reversed. For instance, a becomes Z, B becomes Y, C becomes X, and so on and so forth. The goal of this kata is to take an encoded string and decipher, decode that string by swapping that letter's occurrence in the alphabet with the other letter. Alright, so in the kata instructions here, this string that you see right here, will become this string down here. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. All right, we got const decode, and we'll have our message string right here. And what we are going to do is, we are going to first create a string. Yeah, okay. What we'll do, we'll create a couple strings. Alphabet, we'll set that equal to our alphabet here. Give me just a moment here. And then we'll create a reversed alphabet here. All right, what we are going to do, do we account for capital letters too? I don't think so. Okay, just lowercase letters, okay. Now, what we are going to do with our message string here is we are going to do this. We're gonna return, we're gonna split that message into its individual characters, and we are gonna run that message through the reduce method. We're gonna have our result string and our current character right here. And we are gonna set that initial accumulator to a blank string. And what we are going to do is we are going to find the index of our current character in our alphabet string here. What I'm gonna go what I'm going to go ahead and do actually is we're gonna split or rather, actually no. I don't need to split that into its individual characters here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and do const alphabet index and we are going to look for the index of our current character in our alphabet string up here. So alphabet.index of char. And if our alphabet index is not minus one, meaning the character was found in our alphabet string up here, we are going to go ahead and do result plus equals uh, reversed alphabet at the alphabet index. Otherwise, if the current character was not found in our alphabet string, we will just go ahead and do Actually, we need to return this. We'll just go ahead and return our result plus our current character right here. All right, let's go ahead and grab this string right here. And we are going to run that through a console.log down here. Console.log decode, and we are gonna pass this string in right here. 
All right, let's go ahead and run this through Node to see what this looks like. Node warmup decoding a message. And we get the resulting string, I hope nobody decodes this message. That is what we want to see. Let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like. All right, we'll run the tests. And we are good on that. For our next warm-up cut, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out of this here. Uh, we have a club doorman who is going to give us a word. And what we need to do, we need to find the doubled letter in that word. The letter that occurs twice consecutively in that word. And the goal of this kata is to take that letter's position in the alphabet and multiply it by three. All right, for example, the word lettuce and the word lettuce, the letter T occurs twice consecutively. Its position in the English alphabet is 20, and 20 times 3 is 60, which will be our return value here. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. Const right, pass the door, man. And we have our word right here. Now, what we need to do is we need to iterate over, we need to iterate over the characters of this word and look for the one letter of that word that occurs twice. And let me have a look at the kata instructions here. Okay, it can be safely assumed that all of the words that pa are passed in here in the test will have one letter that occurs twice. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do, let's do this. We're gonna do four, let i equals zero. So we iterate through each of the characters of our word. We're gonna do i is less than i uh, word dot length minus one because we are also going to be peaking the second letter after the letter after that, and then we're gonna do plus plus i the step by one. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do is if word or rather word at index i is equal to word at index i plus one. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do, I think, I don't think the kata instructions say anything about our word being case sensitive here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna take this word and we're gonna make it lowercase up here before we do anything here. Anyway, if this character is exactly equal to the character after it in our word, what we are gonna go ahead and do, we actually are going to need the position of the letter A here. A position equals a uh, char code at. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to return word at i dot char code at minus a position. And we are gonna take that code and multiply that by three. And then if we reach the end of this for loop without finding a two consecutive letters here, we're gonna go ahead and return zero down here. All right, let's go ahead and test this out here. Console.log, pass the door, man. And we are gonna give it that word lettuce, L-E-T-T-U-C-E. -E. All right, let's go ahead and feed this into Node to see what this looks like here. Node club, warm up, club doorman, doorman. And we get 57, we do not wanna see that. And I think I know why we are getting that here. I think it, Maybe because probably need to add one to this or rather subtract one from this. And we get to the number 60 here because uh, the position of the letter T in the alphabet is 20, 20 times three is 60. All right, let's go ahead and feed this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. Copy, paste. Uh, we're going to run these tests here. 
And we are good on that. For our next warm-up, Kata, we are dealing with the Barksdale Code. Fans of The Wire will appreciate this one. For those who haven't seen the show, myself included, the Barksdale organization has a simple method for encoding telephone numbers exchanged via pagers. Jump to the other side of the five on the keypad and swap fives with zeros. I'll call your attention to this diagram in the Kata instructions here. This is a visualization of a cellular phone keypad. Alright, the goal of this kata is to write a function that, given an encoded string with exactly 10 digits, returns the actual phone number in string form. We don't have to worry about any validation, parentheses, or hyphens here. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. I'm going to hit train. Uh, constant decode. And we have our string here. And what we are going to do here, I think I'm going to try doing something like this. What version of Node are we using? 14. So, uh, okay, what we're going to go ahead and do, we are going to go ahead and iterate over the characters of this string here. for const char of string. And then what we're going to go ahead and do here is we are going to go ahead and we're going to do something like this. If if char is equal to 1 then we're going to keep track of a return string up here. We are going to do result plus equals nine. Here's some else ifs here. Or I have a better idea. How about a switch statement? Switch char case one. Results plus equals nine. And break. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Give me just one moment while I type everything out here. Whoops, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So what we do here, two becomes eight, three becomes seven, four becomes six, six becomes four, seven becomes three, eight becomes two, nine becomes one. Now, let's go ahead and handle the fives and the zeros here. Case five, result plus equals zero, because we need to swap fives and zeros here. I'll go ahead and grab that and go all the way to the end of our switch statement here. And that should be good. Maybe. I'm going to go ahead and add a default case here, just in case. And that's just going to return a blank string here. All right. Now, at the end of the spore loop, we'll go ahead and return our, our result here. All right. Now, let's handle a little bit of an edge case here. The kata instructions call for a string that is exactly 10 characters in length. So if string.length is not equal to 10, we'll return our we'll turn a blank string here. All right, let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. Oops. All right, let's go ahead and run our tests. And we are good. Our next warm-up kata is going to be part of a little little series here. Let's go over it here. Digital cipher assigns each letter to the of the alphabet to a unique number. For example, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5, and so on and so forth. Instead of letters in, encrypt, in an encrypted word, 
we write the corresponding number. For example, the word scout, S is 19, C is 3, O is 15, U is 21, and T is 20. Then we have add to each of those numbers and obtained digit consecutive digits from the key. For example, in the case of the key equal to 1939, we take our 19, add 1 to get 20. We take our 3 and add 9 to get 12. We take our 15, add 3 to get 18. We take our 21, add 9 and get 30. And we take our 20, we add 1 and we get 21. The goal of this kata is to write a function that accepts a string and an integer. The string being the string we want to encode and the key, the integer being the key we want to encode that string with. Using the encoding algorithm we just went over here. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. I'm gonna hit train. I'm gonna do const encode. We'll have our string and we'll have our key up here. First, we will want to go ahead and split off the key to its individual characters and code them into digits. So const key digits equals dot 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 key dot to string convert the convert the integer key into a string and then split it off into, a, into into its individual characters excuse me and then what we'll go ahead and do we're gonna map each of those characters to its own digits all right what we're gonna go ahead and do now we once again are going to need the position of the letter A in our alphabet here. Const A position equals A char code at plus more, or rather minus one here. All right. All right, let's go ahead and iterate over the characters of our string here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and keep track of a result array here. And that is going to be what's our turn at the end. And what we are going to go ahead and do, we need to get the character code of our current character and subtract it from the A position up here to get its position in the alphabet. So, const char code equals char dot char code at, or rather alphabet position equals char dot char code at minus a position. Let's go ahead and console dot log that to see what that looks like here. I'm gonna uh, do a little console dot log down here. Console dot log encode. Let's take that string scout here. And let's feed this into node to see what that looks like. I'm gonna clear the terminal here. Node warm up digital Cipher one cannot read property to string of undefined. Ah, oh, yes, so we need that 1939 here. And we get to the integers 19, 3, 15, 21, and 20. That these integers correspond to the positions in the alphabet of the characters of the word scout. All right, let's go ahead and continue on here. All right, what we need to do now is we need to take our result. And we actually need to do this in a regular for loop here. For let i equals zero, i is less than or string rather dot length plus plus i, and we do need to convert this string into lowercase here. All right, now what we need to go ahead and do, we need to do result.push alphabet position plus, and now we need to index a digit in our key digits array here. So key digits at index i modulo key digits dot length. In doing this, we ensure that 
we don't in attempt to index a digit in this array that is out of range. All right, let's go ahead and run this through node here. Char is not defined because we actually need to index our string here at the given position. And we get to the array 20, 12, 18, 30, and 21. That way we know our string is successfully encoded. All right, let's try another string here. How about masterpiece? Running that through node, we get the array 14, 10, 22, 29, 6, 27, 19, 18, 6, 12, and 8. And that way we know that this string has been encoded successfully as well. Let's go ahead and run this through Code Wars to see what this looks like here. I'm going to hit test. We're going to hit attempt. And we are good on that. Finally, we are following up on our digital cipher here with another kata solution here. This time, we are given the array of integers representing an encoded string and the key. This time, the goal is to decode that array of integers in order to obtain the original string. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. const decode and we will have our encoded ints and our key here all right we will do just as we did before we're going to go ahead and get the key digits dot, dot key dot to string dot map parse int and what we are going to do this time is we're going to do four. Well, I'm going to keep track of our result string. And that's going to be what's returned at the end. We, again, will need the position of the lowercase a here. Const a position equals a dot char code at, I think it's still minus one here. All right. Now, let's go ahead and iterate over. Let i equals zero. i is encoded in stop length. Plus plus i, and what we are going to go ahead and do is we're going to do result. We're going to concatenate to our result string, and what we are going to do, I think it's string dot from char code encoded int at index i minus key digits index i modulo key digits style length and i think that should well be all there is to it here all right let's go ahead and kind of create an array here we're gonna grab Uh, first int, so we're going to set that equal to an array 20, 12, 18, 30, and 21. You may recall from the previous warm up kata that this was the encoded form of the string scout. All right, let's go ahead and do a console.long here. We're going to decode that first int, and we're going to pass in our key 1939. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Node warmup digital cipher two. And we get a blank string. Why are we getting a blank string? Because what actually we are forgetting to do here We are forgetting to add the A position here. And that is still not right here. Okay, let's go ahead and Let's 
Okay, let's go ahead and... Find out what's going wrong here. Okay, let's go ahead and do a pencil.log. String that from char code. A position plus one. And that should give us the letter A. Okay, let's go ahead and do a pencil down long here. Uh, encoded hints at I, minus key digits at I, modulo key digits down length. Oh, that's interesting. Why are we getting not a number? Let's have a look at this predicate function up here. Token. Alright, 19, 3, 15, 21, 20. Okay, let's go ahead and add to that the A position. Okay, I think I'm. I think I know where I might be going wrong here now. Let's go ahead and try this one. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I did not quite see that in our terminal, but it looks like we've got it right now. Let's go ahead and get rid of this console.log here. And let's go ahead and try out another array here. How about the array that represents the encoded form of the word masterpiece? And that would be 14, 10, 22, 29, 6, 27, 19, 18, 6, 12, and 8. We're going to do console.log. Get decode second int and that key 1939. Another closing quotes here. And let's speed that in a node to see what that looks like here. And we get the string masterpiece. Alright, I think I'm ready to punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like. I'm gonna run the tests. And we are good on that. That concludes today's warm-up segment. I will see you in the next kata. In the last couple of warm-up katas, we were using an integer key to encode a string into an array of integers and then decode that array of integers back into the original string. Now, we are given that encoded, that decoded string and the encoded array of integers and the goal of this kata is to determine what key was used to encode that string. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. All right, we're gonna do const find the key. We're gonna have our string and our encoded ints right here. I'm gonna do a little console.long here. And we are going to do console.long find the key. We're gonna have our string scout and the encoded integers 20, 12, 18, 30, and 21. You may recall in our warm-up katas that the key that was used to encode the string into this array of integers was 1939. So this is going to be the that is going to be the return value for this kata solution function here. All right, let's go ahead and first we are going to need obviously need the position of the letter A the char code of the letter A, so const A position equals A char code at. Now we are going to go ahead and we will need the char code, we will need the characters of our string. So const char codes, 
alphabet codes. So we're going to take that string, split it into its individual characters, and then run that through the map method. And we're going to map each of these characters to their position in the alphabet. So, uh, char dot char code at minus a position, and I think it's minus one right here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and console dot log that here to see what that looks like here. I'm gonna feed that in a node. And uh, I don't think that was what we wanted. How about plus one here instead? And we get to the uh, positions of the letters in Scout in our alphabet, 19, 3, 15, 21, and 20. All right, what we are gonna go ahead and do We're gonna, we are going to go ahead and determine the key digits here. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to take the alphabet codes and run that through the reduce method. Uh, key digits and for our accumulator and the code right here. We're gonna set that accumulate, initial accumulator to an empty array. And what we are gonna go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and take our encoded ints and we will need the index for this predicate function here. We are going to take the encoded int add to this index and subtract it from our code. Actually, yeah, this is going to need to be an array here. So what this reduce method is going to do, uh, we're going to have three parameters in this predicate function. The array of digits that make up our key, uh, the character code of the current character of our alphabet codes right here, and then the index of that code. Now, what this reduce method predicate function is gonna do is append to the key array the difference between the encoded integer at the current index of the alphabet codes array minus the current code. This should give us the digits of our key, the key that we use to encrypt it. Console.log key digits. Let's run that through node to see what that looks like. And we see the digits in 19391. Now, some or all of these digits will be the key that was used. Now, according to the Kata instructions, however, the key has to be the shortest of all possible keys that can be used to code the message. For example, when the possible keys are one and two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and so on, our solution should return 12. Now, if you recall during the warm-up katas, we use the integer 1939 to encode this string into this array of integers. Now, we need to determine that from this array of integers right here. And I have an idea as to how I am going to go about that. But first, let's handle a little edge case here. What if we have an instance where the key, encryption key, the encoding key, is a single digit integer? And we can handle this edge case by doing this. If math.min spreading the key digits is equal to math.max spreading the key digits. We will just go ahead and return key digits at index zero because that is the sole integer that was used to encode the string. Now, 
comes the real meat and potatoes here. We are going to go ahead and do a wild true loop here. And we're going to go ahead and keep track of let key length. We're going to set that equal to 2 here. And we're going to keep track of a boolean inside of our while loop. And we're going to set that equal. We're going to keep track of a boolean inside of our while loop. And I think we'll call it sentinel. We're going to set that equal to true here. And we are going to go ahead and do a const slice equals key digits dot slice. We're going to start from zero and go to key length. And then we are going to go ahead and iterate over the digits of our key digits here, starting from the key length. I is less than key digits dot length plus plus I. And what we are going to go ahead and try doing here is we're going to set the value of our sentinel boolean to either true or false depending upon I think it is key digits at index i is equal to sliced at index i modulo key length. And then if our sentinel is equal to false, we will go ahead and break out of this for loop here. And then at the end of this while loop here, if our sentinel is still equal to true, we will go ahead and return parse int slice dot join with a blank string separator here. Otherwise, we will increment our key length and continue the while loop. I think that's how it is going to go here. And of course, if our key length becomes equal to the key digits dot length here. We will do just that as well. All right, I think I'm I think I'm ready to test this out here. And we do receive the key 1939 as a result here. All right, let's go ahead and visit some of these tests down here. Let's grab this. Uh, let's grab this call here. Uh, console dot log find the key. And we receive the key twelve here. I think this is working just fine. Let's try the string masterpiece here and check to see if we get the key 1939. Console.log find the key. And we see and we in fact receive the key 1939. All right, I think I'm feeling good about this. But first, let's explain everything that is going on here. Here we have our Kata solution find the key, and it accepts two parameters, the decoded string and the encoded array of integers. The goal of this Kata solution was to find out the integer key that was used to encode that string. 
we first start by getting the position of the lowercase a in the ASCII table here. And then we go ahead and take our string, split it into its individual characters, run that resulting array through the map method. And in its predicate function, we return the character code of that character in the ASCII table, subtracting the position of the A and then adding one to get that particular character's position in the English alphabet. Next, we hey, next we take our find out Next, we go ahead and take our alphabet codes that we created up here and run that through the reduce method. The predicate function here takes three arguments. The key, the digits that make up our key, which is initially set to an empty array, the current alphabet code in our alphabet codes array, and the index of that code. Now, it can be safely assumed that this encoded string the decoded string and the encoded integers array have the same length of characters and elements, respectively. Now, in the reduce methods predicate function here, we are going to go ahead and push to our key array here the value of the encoded integer at to this index minus the alphabet code right here. And as a result, that should give us the digits that make up our key. Now, each of these digits will be used in sequence to encode each of the characters of our string. If you recall, in our scout string here, the digits was 1, 9, 3, 9, and 1, for example. Now, what we need to do is we need to determine the actual key that was used. Again, the key has to be the shortest of all of the possible keys that can be used to code the message. So 19391 would become 1939. And here is how we would handle this. First, we would handle an edge case here. For instances where a single digit integer was used to encode our string, if the minimum of the key digits elements was equal to the maximum of those elements, we would just go ahead and return the first element of our key digits array here, because that was the sole digit that was used to encode the string. Otherwise, we go ahead and keep track of a key length here, and in this while true loop, we do the following. We keep track of a sentinel boolean here, and we slice, make a slice of the key digits array from zero to the current key length. In this for loop here, we set our sentinel boolean to either true or false, depending upon if the key digit at the current index here was equal to the digit in our sliced array at index i modulo key length. And if this was set to false as a result, we go ahead and break out of this for loop, otherwise we continue. Now, at the end of this while loop here, we check to see if our sentinel is still true. If it is, then we have found our encoding key here. So we take the, we take the integers in our sliced array and join them together with a blank string separator, and then we parse that out as an int to be returned. Otherwise, we go ahead and increment the key length and continue the while loop unless the key length here becomes equal to key digits dot length, in which case we go ahead and join all of the digits of our key together with a blank string and then parse that out as an integer to be returned. All right, let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm gonna run these tests and let's hit attempt. And we are good. Here is the better code solution of the day. Pay mind to the code snippet you see to my left here, and particularly pay mind to the for loop you see at the end of this particular kata solution. Here we iterate from the second character of a string that is formed by joining together all the digits that were used for the key to encode our string, and we iterate to the end of that particular string. Now inside that for loop, we go ahead and make a substring from character number zero all the way to the index character i. 
Next, we go ahead and take a blank string and run it through the string object's pad start method. Now, the pad start method takes a string and applies padding to that string according to another string that is passed in. And the padding starts at the start of the string. Now, the pad start that we use here, we pass in the length of the key string and the current substring. So we are basically padding a blank string with multiple instances of our substring. Now, if we take the return of that and check to see if it's equal to the key string, and if it is, we go ahead and return that substring converted into an integer. However, we, if we make it to the end of the for loop without doing any such thing, we go ahead and take the entire key string, convert that into an integer, and return it. I am going to include a link to the documentation on pad start over on MDN in the description box below. Here we have a pseudo encryption algorithm which, given a string s and an integer n, concatenates all of the odd index characters of s with all of the even index characters of s, the process repeating n times. For example, given the string 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if we perform this encryption algorithm on that string one time, we get the string 135024. The goal of this kata is to write this encryption function, but also write a decryption function to revert the encrypted string back to its original form. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one. Const encrypt. We'll start with the encryption function here. We'll have our string and our number of rounds here. And what we are going to go ahead and do, we're going to go ahead and keep track of our result string here. Set that equal to string, and we're going to return that result down here. Now, in a for loop, we're going to go ahead and iterate through the number of rounds. So we'll be sure we perform our, our encryption the proper number of times here. And what we'll go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and do a little destructuring right here. We are going to do... I think it's odd chars and even chars here in this destructuring assignment. And we're going to run this through the reduce method. We're going to take our string, split it into its individual characters, and we're going to run this through the reduce method. Now, in the predicate function, we're going to have our parts, which is going to be our accumulator, which is going to be the two parts of our string here and then we're going to have our current character here. We also will need the index as well. Our initial accumulator will be set to a pair of blank strings here. Now, what we need to do is we need to check to see if our index is an even index. We do that by doing index modulo 2, that is the remainder of index divided by 2, and if it's equal to 0, then we have an even index here. So we'll do parts and index one. Index one is going to be our even chars and we're gonna concatenate to that string the current character. Otherwise, if we have an odd number index here, we'll go ahead and take the part at index zero and add our character to that instead. And we'll return our parts array at the end of this. And then at, after this call to reduce, we're gonna take our result we're going to go ahead and do odd chars plus even chars. We're going to take our result and reassign to it. Our odd chars concatenated with our even chars. And that's how we're going to do our encryption here. All right, let's go ahead and create a string. One, zero, one, two, three, four. And we are going to do let encrypted. We're going to set that equal to encrypt our original string. We're going to do one round of encryption here. All right, we're going to go ahead and console.log that. First our original string, and then our encrypted string right here. Let's go ahead and feed this into Node to see what this looks like here. Node alternating split. And we have our encrypted string of zero our original string here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then our encrypted string of 1, 3, 0, 2, 4. 
But we're not quite done yet. Now we need to write the decryption function. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do, we do const decrypt. We're going to have our encrypted string and our number of rounds that we use to encrypt. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do We're going to go ahead and keep track of a result string. And that's going to be what's returned here. We're going to have our for loop here for our number of rounds. And what we're going to do here, I think we're going to go ahead. What I want to do is I want to calculate the midpoint of our string here. So const midpoint. We're going to set that equal to math.floor. We're going to take the length of our encrypted string and divide that by two. The floor makes sure it floors it down to the previous integer. Now what we are now what we're going to have to do here. Let, we're going to create a string here called decrypted. Set that equal to a blank string here. Next, we're going to do for let j equals zero. J is less than or equal to midpoint plus plus j. And what we're going to need to do here, I think we're going to do decrypted plus equals. One three zero two one three zero encrypted or rather results at J plus midpoint plus result at J. And then we're going to go ahead and set our result string to our decrypted down here. Let's see what that looks like here. We actually need to call it first. Let decrypted equals decrypt encrypted. And one round of encryption. We're going to go ahead and log that result down here. And we're almost we're almost there. We just need to go ahead and substring create a substring here from zero to encrypted dot length. Actually, we kind of need to do that up here just to make sure there are no screw ups here. Let's do three rounds of encryption here. And uh, yeah, there's some something's not right here. Uh, not two rounds of encryption here. Yeah, let's. Because uh, we actually need to take our result string and not the string that you pass in and run that through reduce. V2104, and we get our original string back 01234. Let's try three rounds of encryption. We get 20314 for our encrypted, and we get our original string back for the. Uh, I think. I think I like where this is going. Let's try a string with an even number of characters now. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's try two rounds of encryption here. We get zero, one, two, three, four, five for our original. Our encrypted string is three, zero, four, one, five, two. And we get back our decrypted string as zero, one, two, three, four, five. All right, I like where this is going. Let's handle a couple of edge cases here. If string is empty 
or rounds is less than or equal to zero, we'll go ahead and return our string instead without any changes. We'll apply that same thing to our decrypt function here. All right, I think I am ready to punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and run these tests here. And we've got a problem, what is going on here? Reference error string is not defined. Because uh, because uh, that string is actually called encrypted in our decrypt function. Right, let's go ahead and punch that into Code Wars to see what that looks like here. Uh, run these tests again. I've got, got a problem again. What's going on now? Encrypted is not defined. because I misspelled encrypted. And uh, those tests passed, let's hit attempt. And we got one more problem to deal with here. Result is not iterable. Instances where a string is, that looks like an instance where a string is a, uh, Null here. Let's console.log this here. Let's see where we're going wrong here. Let's go ahead and hit attempt again. Ah, looks like we are given null here. So what we're going to go ahead and do, null is a falsy value, so check for a falsy value here instead of a blank string. Let's uh, copy that all into Code Wars again here. Now what now? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, maybe I'm putting in one too many uh, exclamation points here. Yep, that was the issue. Let's hit attempt. And we are good. Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make here. This was one of a good many katas that I tried doing for a previous episode of Versus Code Wars, but I wound up getting too frustrated by the kata and its tests, and I just wound up skipping over it for another kata. I'm glad I was able to come back to this kata and actually be able to solve it this time, and I hope to do the same with all the other katas that I wound up skipping over. Sometimes it's a good idea to just step away from that kata and just let it swim in your head, until a good solution pops up in your head and you're able to solve that kata. Here is a class for a simple substitution cipher, which replaces one character from an alphabet with a character from an alternate alphabet, where each character's position in one alphabet is mapped to the other alphabet for encoding and decoding. I'll call your attention to the example here in the kata solution here. Here we have the 26 letters of our English alphabet right here in this first string. And in this second string are the characters in that same alphabet scrambled. But all 26 characters are there. Now, the goal of this substitution cipher class is to take the letters in one string and encode them based on those characters' position in those two alphabets. If a character provided is not in the opposing alphabet, we should just simply leave it as B. Now, the goal of this kata is to implement this class. Let's go ahead and get started with that. First, we have our constructor, which takes two string parameters. 
the strings correspond to the characters of both alphabets. So let's go ahead and do this. This dot initial alphabet, and we'll set that to A, B, C, one. And then this dot alternate alphabet, and we'll set that to A, B, C, two. Now let's work on our encode function here. Now, what this encode method is supposed to do is to take a string and return a string with the characters of this string mapped to the alternate alphabet. So what we'll go ahead and do is first we'll go ahead and get the index. We're gonna go ahead and get the index of each character of our string. I'm gonna go ahead and keep track of a result string right here. And that's going to be what's return. And what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to do for const char of a string. And what we'll do inside this for loop is we're going to go ahead and get the index of this character in the initial alphabet. And I think if I'm right about this last clause here, we probably also need to get the index of that very same character in the alternate alphabet as well. So what we're gonna what we'll excuse me what we will go ahead and do is if this dot alternate actually we'll go ahead and yeah if this dot alternate whoops alternate alphabet dot index of and we are gonna go ahead and pass in our char here and if this returns minus one, then this character is not present in the alternate alphabet, the opposing alphabet according to the kata instructions. In which case, we just go ahead and append the initial character to our result string. Otherwise, what we will go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and get to the index of this character in the initial alphabet and then append to our result string the character in the alternate alphabet at that same index. And we will do that like this. Uh, const initial index, and we'll set that equal to this dot initial alphabet dot index of our char. And then we'll do, I think, just for the sake of completeness, if this initial index is equal to minus one, we'll just go ahead and append our original character here. Otherwise, what we'll go ahead and do, we'll do result plus equals this dot alternate alphabet dot char at, and we'll go ahead and pass in our initial index right here. All right, let's go ahead and test this out here. What am I gonna go ahead and do here? We're gonna do const sub, we'll set that equal to a new substitution cipher. And we're gonna go ahead and actually grab these two alphabet strings here. I'm gonna paste them right here. And you know how much a fan I am of the var keyword, so I'm gonna replace those with const. I'm gonna do abc1, abc2. I'm gonna pass those into our substitution cipher here. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna do a console.log. We're gonna do sub.encode. We're gonna pass in the, the five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. All right, let's run this through node to see what this looks like here. Node substitution cipher. And we have our encoded vowels, E, I, R, F, and G. And that is what we want to see. Now, what we now need to do is write the decode method, which will take this encoded string and decode it back into our vowel string here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that console.log right now. Console.log sub.decode. We're gonna pass in that E I R F G here. Semicolon. All right. Now let's go ahead and implement that decode method here. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna keep, have a result string here, and we are going to return that down here. We are going to go ahead and 
iterate over each character of our encoded string. And what we need to do is we need to get the position of that character in the alternate alphabet and then return the character in the initial alphabet at that same index here. So what I think we're going to go ahead and do is, all right, if, first we're going to go ahead and get the position of this character in the alphabet, in al al alternate alphabet, excuse me, alternate index, we're going to set that equal to this dot alternate alphabet dot index of char. And then if alternate index is equal to minus one, meaning that character was not in the alternate alphabet, then I think what we go ahead and do is okay if this character was not... No, I don't think that's how we did it, though. First, what I'm going to go ahead and try is this. Const alternate index equals... Okay, that character was likely never encoded. Alright, this dot alternate alphabet dot index of char. What I'm gonna go ahead and try doing here is first result plus equals this dot initial alphabet dot char at alternate index. I'm gonna run this through a console.log here and we do get our vowel string back here. I'm not necessarily sure though if this is correct. Now in this encode function we had to find out if any one of the characters provided were not in the opposing, the alternate alphabet. And if that's the case, then we just go ahead and push the string from the, init the initial character to the result string. any event let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh console dot log that string here and our two alphabets let's go ahead and uh run this through code wars to see what this looks like here now there are no tests here so i just have to hit attempt and sure enough, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and copy this over here. And let's run this through no to see what this looks like here. Let's go ahead and grab that alternate alphabet right here. Paste that here. Oh, that's interesting. Let's have a look at some of the other tests here. Alright, the tests here are using Node.js version 8.1.3, so I'm going to do NVM use 8 here. And let's go ahead and run that again. <laughs> and we still have the same result here. I wonder what's going on here.
I'm gonna go ahead and unless I'm gonna go ahead and do a cancel dialog code string oh now it's passing oh okay let's go I think we're gonna need to rework our So what we'll go ahead and do, if alternate index is equal to minus one, what we'll go ahead and do, we'll push that sharp back here. Then else case, we'll push result plus equals this dot initial alphabet dot in char at alternate index. All right, let's go ahead and take this for loop here and copy that into our kata solution here. hit attempt again and we are good this kind of solution would have been better implemented by using the map method first take the string passed into the encode and decode methods split them into its individual characters with the split method or the spread syntax and bracket combo that I usually use and then run that array through the map method now in the predicate function what we'll go ahead and do is Look for the index of the current character in the alternate alphabet in the case of the encode method or the initial alphabet in the case of the decode method. And if a character at that index is found, we go ahead and append that to the array returned by map. Otherwise, we just go ahead and add to that array the initial character. Finally, we take the resulting array in both cases and join them back together with the blank string separator. And do, in so doing, we should have the encoded and decoded string respectively. Gandalf's writings have long been available for study, but no one has yet figured out what language they are written in. At least until now, it's been discovered that he used nothing but a simple letter substitution scheme. And further, that scheme is its own inverse. That is, the same encoding operation which scrambled the message will unscramble it as well. This operation is performed by replacing vowels in this sequence right here shown in this string, A, I, Y, I, excuse me, A, I, Y, E, O, and U. With that vowel advanced three places in this sequence cyclically that is wrapping back to the beginning of the string if necessary while preserving case similarly consonants in this sequence of letters here are encoded by advancing 10 letters also cyclically the goal of this kata is to use this substitution scheme to decode Messages here. Messages like uh, this one right here. Let me go ahead and copy this. I'm going to do console.log tongues. Now, the goal of this kata is to decode this string and find out what it is. And let's go ahead and get started with that here. We're going to do const tongues. We're going to have our string here, our encoded string. And what we are going to do is we are going to, I think we're going to try using the reduce method here. We're going to do dot, 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 string, dot, reduce. We're going to split that string into its individual characters and then run that array through the reduce method. We'll have our result string. We'll have our current character. And I, and I think we also will need, yeah, I think actually that will be good here. And don't forget we need to join that back together with a blank string separator at the end. Actually, no, we don't because 
we'll set our initial accumulator to a blank string. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. First, we need to check to see if our letter is uppercase here. Right, we'll do const is upper case. And we'll set that equal to char true if char is equal to char not to uppercase. And then we'll go ahead and get the lowercase form of this character here. Now, what we'll go ahead and do with that here is we need to check to see if this character is in the vowel sequence or the consonant sequence. So we'll go ahead and do this. Const vowel index. We'll set that equal to vowel sequence dot index of char, or rather lowercase, the lowercase character here. And similarly, we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the consonant sequence here. Consonant index equals consonant sequence dot index of lowercase. Now, this, al this encoding algorithm being an inverse, we should be able to achieve the same result encoding, decoding the string as we do encoding the string, excuse me, by advancing the vowel three places or the consonant 10. So what we will go ahead and do is, if vowel index is not equal to minus one, that means the character was found in our vowel sequence here. What we will go ahead and do is we will return result plus the result string plus vowel sequence that char at vowel vowel index plus three modulo vowel sequence dot length. That will help with the wrapping here because it's a, because it's cyclical. All right, now, next we'll check to see if our lowercase letter is in the consonant sequence here. Well, we actually need to store that in a result char. Const result char, or rather let result char and then we'll go ahead and take and get rid of all this here and instead say result char equals and we'll do it just like that here. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. Now, anyway, else if consonant index is not equal to minus one, what we'll do is result char equals consonant sequence dot char at consonant index plus 10 modulo consonant sequence dot length. Now we should have our decoded character here. Finally, what we need to do is we need to return result plus. We'll need to check to see if our initial character was uppercase. If it is, we do result char dot two uppercase. Otherwise, we'll do our result char lowercase instead. All right, that should be it. Let's go ahead and test our function out here on this string. Node, uh, node tongs. And uh, that does not do it here. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and cancel that long. 
results and a shot here. Hmm. Let's go ahead and cancel that log of the lowercase here. Alright, let's go ahead and cancel that log of the log of a vowel index and consonant index. Uh, some characters might not be found at all here. Let's go ahead and do an else case up here. We'll do just return result plus the char here. Huh. That's fascinating here. Let's go ahead and count the dialog and the result char down here. Let's go ahead and count this out here. Pretty sure that's not right here. Yeah, I think I know where we're going wrong here. It was the, I think it was the placement of the parentheses here. All right, now let's try that. And now we have the correctly decoded string of one ring to rule them all. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this console dot, these console.logs here. And I think we've got it right here. Let's go ahead and look up some of these tests here. How about this long string here? Four score and seven years ago. My pace is here. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought unto this continent a new nation. All right, how about this one here? Let's go ahead and uh, grab this string here. Let's go ahead and copy that, paste this in here. Numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and punctuation they should both be unchanged. All right, I think we are ready to punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. Hit copy. I paste this here. Run the tests, and we are good. If you ever find yourself writing an algorithm where you need to take an index of an element in an array and advance that index by a certain number, you need to ensure that that new index is within the range of that array. What you can do is, you can take that index, add to it the number of steps you need to advance, and then take that sum and divide it by the number of elements in the array in total, and then get its remainder. That remainder becomes the new index that you want. Now, if you ever find yourself having to advance by a negative number of steps, in other words, go back, what you can do is you can go ahead and reverse the array and then calculate the absolute value of that number of steps you need to go back. And this algorithm should work the same way there as a result. This is a rail fence cipher. This cipher is used to encode a string like this one here by placing each character successfully in a diagonal along a set of rails. We first start moving diagonally downward. Diagonally and downward, starting with this letter, and this one, and this one. And when we reach the bottom, the last rail, we reverse direction and move diagonally upward until we reach the top rail right here. And we continue this pattern until we reach the end of our string right here. And as a result of this encoding algorithm, we get this encoded string right here. The goal of this kata is to write two functions here. One for encoding a string with this algorithm, and one for decoding an encoding string with this algorithm here. Both functions to take two arguments. The string to encode or decode, and the number of rails used in our rail fence cipher. All right, 
for both encoding and decoding, we can assume that there will be at least two rails and that passing an empty string will return an empty string. Note that this example does not include punctuation. There are tests in this kata though that will include punctuation. We cannot filter that out as they are a part of the string. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this three key ukata here. We have two functions to write here. Const encode rail fence cipher. We'll have our string and rail count. And we'll have our decode rail fence cipher. We'll have our string and our rail count. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take these two strings and run them through console.logs of these two functions here. Console.log encode rail fence cipher. We're gonna pass this string here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this encoded string. We're gonna do console.log decode rail fence cipher. We're gonna pass in that very same string here. And in this example up here, we used three rails, so we're going to pass in three as the second argument to both of our functions here. All right, let's go ahead and start with the encoding here. Now, what I think we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to populate an array of strings. Count our rail count here. All right. We'll do const rails. We're gonna do. We're gonna create a blank array with a number of elements equal to our rail count, and we're gonna run that through the map method here. And in our predicate function, we'll just return a blank string. As a result, this should give us an array of three blank strings here. I'm gonna run this through node here. And we do have our array of blank strings here. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do, I think we're gonna go ahead and, we'll go ahead and do this here. Keep track of the current rail. Set that equal to zero for now. And I think we'll keep track of a flag where we are either advancing or going backwards here. All right, now let's go ahead and iterate over the characters of our string. Now, what we'll go ahead and do, we'll do rails at current rail and we'll add to that to the current character here. Now, what we need to do is if current rail, if we are advancing right now and current rail Now, if we are advancing, if advancing is equal to true. Next, we'll go ahead and check to see if current rail plus one is equal to rail count. Then we will go ahead and we'll do current rail minus minus and then we'll set advancing to false. Otherwise, we'll do current rail plus plus here and continue with that. Otherwise, if advancing, or rather else, if advancing is set to false, we'll do if current rail is equal to zero, then we'll do current rail plus plus, and then we'll set advancing to true. Otherwise, we'll do current rail minus minus here. And I think, I think that ought to be sufficient here. Let's go ahead and console.log our rails array here at the end here. Run this through node again. And as you can see, uh, 
each of our rail strings contains the characters of our encoded substrings here. I think that ought to do. Let's go ahead and as a result, what we'll do is we'll t do a return. We're going to take our rails here and we're going to join those together with a blank string separator here. And that should give us our encoded rail fence cipher string here. Now let's work on decoding the string and turning it back into our initial string. Now, now comes the difficult part here. Maybe if I go ahead and try this here. Uh, chars. Going to create an array here. Uh, with the length of our string. Along our chars. Then I think we'll go ahead and try doing here. One, one, two, three. I think we'll do four. Let I equal zero. I is. Less than string dot length plus, and then we'll do i plus equals. Okay, I think what we need to do here. Must. Uh, rail count minus. Let's count if rail count is equal to two, then we'll set advance count equal to two. Else, rail count, or rather, advance count. We'll set that equal to rail count minus two. Rail count equals rail count minus two here. Then what we'll go ahead and do. We'll do four. We'll set that equal to a blank space here. We'll do four. Let i equal zero. I is less than string dot length. I plus equals advance count. 
And then what we'll go ahead and do, take our chars at index i and we'll set that to Uh, no, we can't. No, that ain't gonna do here. Alright, well, we'll go ahead and do. Two tier four loop here. Char at J, we'll set char at I, and I think we'll do chars at I, and we'll set that equal to string at J here. We're gonna do a console.log chars.join with a blank string separator down here. And I think what we'll go ahead and do Yeah, I think we got the first part of the puzzle down here Now what we need to do Actually, we're going to need more than one for loop here. We'll probably need one. We're going to need one for each of our each uh, rail on our count here. So for let r equals rail equals zero, rail is less than rail count plus plus rail. I'm going to put this for loop up here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this console.log up here. Whoops. Now, what we'll go ahead and do. Oh, I don't do either. Right, I gotta rethink this here. Right, now we know I can't. Now. One, two, three, four. All right, what we are trying to do here, we have this encode rail fence cipher function here, and we use the rail fence cipher to encode this string into this string by placing its characters along a series of rails here. We then take each of the characters and each of the rails and concatenate those together into the encoded string. 
Now what we need to do, we need to find some way to take this encoded string and decode it back into the initial string here. And this is taking quite a bit more time than I thought it was going to be. How about this one? One, two, three, four, five. Four, one, two, three. You're just trying to do the same string along uh, some different numbers of rails here. Okay, let's go ahead and try this here. We have a result string here. Or well, rather, result chars. Set that equal to string.length map. Result chars that join blank string separator. I think what we'll go ahead and do. Keep track of an advance count. Or let rail equal zero. Rail is less than rail count. Plus plus rail. I think what we'll go ahead and do. One, two, three, two, three. I think we'll set that equal initially to Next, I think of what we'll go ahead and do. That is tough. I think we'll do four of what? I equals rail. Two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two. Yeah, one, two. Right about this one. One, two. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, one, two, three. And then, one, two, three, four. One, two. Or rather, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'll go ahead and have this advance count up here. I think we'll do advance count. So that equal to first of rail count is equal to two, then set so that rail count. Otherwise, rail count minus two, I think. And then for let i equals rail and j equals zero. 
I is less than string dot length, and then I plus equals advance count, and J plus plus. And what we need to do, take our result chars, I think at index I. Set that equal to. Uh, ain't gonna work. Yeah, you know, maybe it will. Maybe if I set cursor. All right, I have another idea here. Maybe if we keep track of the cursor up here. For let i equals zero or rather rail uh, is less than string dot length i plus equals advance count and then what we'll do result chars at I think we'll go ahead and set this cursor up here equal to zero here. I and we'll set that equal to string at cursor plus plus here. All right, see what that looks like here. Oh, that looks like nothing yet. I think this is what we were supposed to do here. All right, we're almost there. Let's go ahead and do all this in an if statement up here. If advance count is equal to, or rather, if rail count is equal to two, then we'll do advance count plus e, and set advance count equal to rail count. Else if rail plus one is equal to rail count. We'll do advance count. Set that equal to rail count. One, two, three, four, And we'll set that equal to rail count plus rail count minus two. And then 
then otherwise... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two. Otherwise, what we'll do, set advance count, set that equal to rail count plus rail count minus two as above, and then additionally subtract two times the current rail. Let's see what that looks like here. Oh, got to get rid of this line up here. Over here. And we have our... Oh, and would you look at that? We have our decoded string. We are discovered fleet at once. Yeah, it looks like that worked. All right, what we're going to go ahead and do now, we're going to go and return result chars dot join with the blank string separator here. And it looks like that seems to have worked without fail. Let's have a look at some other tests here. How about the classic Hello World? Encoded and that gives us a string H O O exclamation point E L comma W R D L space L. All right, let's go ahead and grab that here. Let's grab that encoded string here and run that through our decode here. And we get the decoded string hello world back. Oh, we're, I think we're almost there. I think we are almost there. In fact, I think we might be there now. Let's go, let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. Let's run these three tests here. And I figured we'd have some problems here. Oh, that's interesting. All right, let's go ahead and console.log encoding string and uh, rail count. And we'll go ahead and decode, put that in here. It's a log in here. Let's hit attempt again here. That way we can see some console.logs here. Now, I think the issue is we're going to hit copy. We're going to bring back our we are discovered fee at once string here. And we're going to run this through four rails now. Where are we going wrong here? <laughs> okay. Alright, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. Two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. Okay. <laughs> one, two. Two, 
that one, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, it looks like our decoding code is breaking here. Boy, I'm starting to discover my decoding code is broken as heck. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. Give me a moment. All right, I have a new idea. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do here, get rid of this terminal here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rethink my code here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'll go ahead and try calculating a midpoint here. I set that equal to math that seal rail count divided by two and then what I'm gonna what I'm gonna go ahead and do I'm gonna do go only to this midpoint here so what am I go ahead and try doing here let's run this here once more here What I think I'm gonna go ahead and do, and we're gonna re repeat this for loop here. First going from the top to the middle, and then we're gonna repeat it going to the from the bottom to the middle here. So I'm gonna do another for loop here. Let's rail equals rail count minus one. I think it's going to be rail is greater than or equal to or rather greater than or equal to I think midpoint and then minus minus rail here and we're going to go ahead and And we're gonna copy we're gonna go ahead and copy this code up here and paste this in the second for loop here and we're gonna make some modifications here if hold on I'm gonna go ahead and get get rid of this for loop code here got some refactoring I might want to consider doing up here I'm going to run this code again. And I want to see if this initial code still works somewhat. I got what well, my mom will go back actually uh copy these two lines of code here and then paste them right here. I take this encoded string here, copy it, paste that here. Uh, no, 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 I'm going to take this code here, copy that, paste that in here. SN3 here. I 
think I'm on to something here. All right, let's go ahead and work on this other for loop here. We're going to work on our advanced count code here. So we have our advanced count, real count, real count. We're going to need to keep track of another variable here. I think we'll call it a relative here. Minus minus rail plus, plus relative. Instead of rail here, we'll have relative here. Now, what I think we can Uh, what I think we can go ahead and attempt to do here. Ah, uh, this isn't going to work either. Okay, kind of need a, and I think I know why. Because we need, actually need to start our for loop at the midpoint here. And then we need to go to the rail count here. Then we need to go to the rail count here. We'll keep that other part of our for loop here too. And then what we'll go ahead and do we'll do the same for loop down here as we did up here. We'll bring back our console.log right here. And then let's try this. Yeah, that's what I was gonna too. We need to rework this for loop here. And then what we'll go ahead and do here. Yeah, because we have this cursor here, that code breaks. So what we need to do... Yeah, we gotta start our rail count here in the second loop at the midpoint. Then we go into... 
ray account. And then plus plus rail. Starting to notice a little bit of a pattern here. Give me one moment. I'm going to pause here and I'll figure this out. Give me a moment. Okay, I'm back. All right, where I was going wrong here is I was assuming I could use a single advance count integer to adv to advance to the next space in the result character's array to place our next character here. Where that was going wrong was in the middle rails, particularly in our even number problems here. Consider this second rail right here. We have the character E. If I wanted to advance to the next character in that rail, I would advance one, two, three, four spaces here. However, if I wanted to advance to the next character in this particular rail after that, I couldn't advance by the same number of paces here. I would have to advance one, two right here. Here is the solution I settled upon and implemented off camera here. And let me explain what's going on here. Here I have this variable called initial advance count, which I set to either the rail count if that is set to two, or the rail count plus rail count minus two here. So for, for a rail count of four, that would be six places I would advance here. Next, I would do a little destructuring assignment here called first advance and second advance. And this would be the number of paces I would advance in an alter alternating fashion here. I would, fir I would first advance by first advance paces and then second advance paces and then first, second, and so on. And this is initially set to initial advance count and zero. All right, next I have this cursor here to go through each of the characters of the string here. Now I have this for loop here. I start at the first rail and I end at the last rail right here. Now, if this rail, if the current rail index is greater than zero, I would go ahead and take the first advance and subtract two and the second advance and add two. Now I have this advance counter right here, which is set to zero here. And this is going to come in handy inside this inner for loop right here. All right, I have this I right here, which is set to the index of the current rail. And I would start at that corresponding character in the string right here. And I would go until the length of the string, but there is no step right here. I would handle this step right here after assigning the current character of our string to our result character's array at the correct index here. Now, this is where this advance counter is going to come in here. We're going to check to see if our advance counter is an even number. We take that, divide it by two, and get its remainder. If it's zero, then we want to advance by the number of places specified by the first advance variable. Unless that advance variable is set to zero, in which case we would advance by the second advance instead. That would happen if we were at the final rail here. Now, if this advance counter is an odd number, we would instead want to advance by the second advance, unless that was zero, in which case we would advance by the first advance instead, like if we were at the first rail here. And in each iteration of our for at the end of each iteration of our for loop, we advance our advance counter and wash, rinse, repeat. Now, at the end of this outer for loop, we take all of the characters of our result characters and we join them together with the blank string separator here. Now, I have to set up a little bit of a test right here, and we are going to perform this rail fence encoding and decoding on this string right here. 
and we are going to check to see if our decode function is decoding the string correctly here. I'm going to go ahead and clear this console here. I'm going to run this through node to see what this looks like here. And as you can see, it looks like we are correctly decoding our strings here. Let's set this to 100 here. Or rather, 20 here. I think that would be more suitable. It looks like our own little tests are passing here. All right. I think we are ready to punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. Right, I'm going to run the initial test here. I'm going to hit Attempt. And we are good. Boy, was that a doozy. As I just said, this one was quite a bit of a doozy, which took quite a bit longer than I thought it was going to take for me to solve. As well it should for these higher-end katas like this 3Q kata. It's abundantly clear that I didn't learn my lesson from the other 3Q kata I did, I think, back in episode 30. And that lesson is to research the katas and plan out how you are going to implement the solutions in advance. And account for all of the possible shortcomings that may come. Planning is an important step to anything, especially in programming. And it's a very good skill to have in your repertoire. And that is going to do it for today's episode of Versus Code Wars. Now, I apologize that this video took quite a bit longer than I thought it was going to take to get out. And I promise I will be more prudent on my video releases here. In the meanwhile, if you like this video or you learned something new, drop a like and subscribe to my channel to see me take on more coding challenges on Code Wars and potentially other future content as well. As always, if you think there is anything I can do to improve on my code for the better, feel free to drop a suggestion in the comments section below. Also, if you are a kata author on Code Wars and you would like to share your authored katas with me, feel free to drop links to those katas in the comments section below and you might see me take on those katas in a future episode of Versus Code Wars. I hope you have a wonderful and safe day and I will see you on the next episode of Versus Code Wars.